going to buy here. Unless you got 200 gold on you right now. <laughs> you know, I imagine a uh, pirate's voice sounding somewhat like a drunk guy at a bar. Except he's got British accent. And <laughs> half completes the words that he's speaking. Anyway, side note. <laughs> Here's a theory. A very weak one, mind you. But a theory I had. Um, based on some information I came across recently, maybe Americans are in, like, like really, really into sweet things. And, like, this is why it's a weak theory, is because I don't have a lot of information. But, to state it anyway, uh, the theory is that it's ingrained in our culture. Sugar, honey, cakes, it's become what we say to our loved ones. Sugar, baby, honey. <laughs> You're the jelly to my donut. You're the crispy to my cream. I mean, it's funny. It's funny and it's hilarious, but I don't know. I don't know, whenever we, we have birthday, there's always some super sweet cake or Valentine's and some chocolate. And I mean, I'm probably just trying to romanticize America, or I don't know if it's considered romanticizing if it's all about sugar. I would just like to build upon this theory. I'd like to see what other cultures do. I heard from a foreign exchange student that some of our foods are too sweet. Like our beans. And they're like, it doesn't taste like beans anymore. It tastes like something else. I admit, we like spice up our beans a lot. I don't know. Just some thoughts. Just a theory. What's up, guys? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> yeah, it's not very wise to vlog while you drive. Mm. I've been trying to come up with names for the channel. I was thinking, uh, I had a thought while I was working out in the yard, blowing some leaves. Penny, you know, because I like I have a book of secrets called Penny for Your Thoughts as it's written on the front. A little tiny thing, I keep all my passwords in there, but I encrypt them all, so. So I thought I might name myself Penny for Penny for Your Thoughts. I don't know, Morgan would probably enjoy it. But in Morgan's eyes, I can do no wrong. Come up with some other ideas. Uh, last man. So last man is a term in the film industry and in commercial industry where uh, when you're, you're filming something and there's catered food, last man is the job of the person who eats lunch last. But they make sure everybody else eats lunch before they eat, and then whenever they start eating, the lunch timer begins. And then whenever they're done eating, everybody goes back to work. So, I don't know, I was thinking about that for the channel name, Last Man. I'm calling myself Last Man. Sugar pie, honey bun, you are my only one. I don't know. Uh, I call myself Wichita. Man, this thing is heavy. It would be worth it to set up a GoPro. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't have to carry this heavy thing everywhere. Although this lens is amazing. This is a Takana 11 to 16 millimeter, 2.8 f-stop. It's great lens. It's sharp. It has some strange properties because it's so wide. For one, it gets really like. 2.8 aperture, I think, I think this is how it works. The smaller your millimeter, like the wider your lens, the larger the depth of field is. Like f2.8 at 11 millimeters versus 100 millimeters is a world of difference because the 100 millimeter f-stop, it's like your depth of field is so shallow, but here, at 2.8, which is what it's at right now, the seat cushion behind my head is still in focus. The car over here is still in focus, and if you could see outside, well, I guess that's out of focus. 
After watching this in post, I realized that I was completely wrong. I was working with a camera today that had a really long lens on it, and thinking about that experience compared to this footage, it actually looks very similar. Like, considering how close my face is to that headrest, I'm beginning to think that no matter what millimeter, f2.8 is the same. It will always be f2.8, same shallow depth of field. But it just looks different whenever you have a wide lens on, like this one, because wide lenses distort distance. Uh, and so do long lenses. It's just that whenever you have a long lens on, things in the background, like far, far in the background, seem really close. And so you get this like background of just wash of color. Whereas with a wide lens, you're getting a lot of like things that are really not that far away that appear to be smaller in the frame because, you know, it's a wide lens. So that's my thoughts on that, disproving myself. Actually, I'm heading to a shoot right now. I've only been on one this week, but it was a great shoot. It's for Schnucks. Uh, it was fantastic. We had tons of food there. We threw like most of it away. It's awful. <laughs> ah, I got new weight counterweights to my glide cam system. Sixty dollars later. That's exciting, because maybe I'll finally actually be able to use this Takan lens. It's so heavy, I couldn't use it on my glide cam because I'm missing like half the weight. I'd also like to get rid of my fly cam, because that was a piece of junk. I couldn't really get any good stuff out of it. Anybody has successfully used a fly cam, I would like to hear about it. This is the only part that's clear enough that you can actually see the Missouri. Looks like this is like the biggest valley ever. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense on this lens. Too bad. I guess that's it.